Yo, 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 what up guys, Into here, hope all is well. Welcome back to another full PC build guide. Today we're gonna be working with a budget of a thousand USD. This build is gonna have so much power for that price tag. If you wanna rock games at 1440p and you're targeting 240 FPS, this PC will have you covered in a bunch of titles. We're gonna play a lot of games on it once we're done building it. In other words, it's gonna be like six different video game montages at the end of this video because the clips we get are not trash. If you're a beginner and you've never ever ever even built a gaming PC, trust me, by the end of this video, you will have the confidence to build your very first rig. So let's go over the parts. I'm gonna start it off with the part I'm most excited about, the graphics card. So we're gonna be rocking an AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT graphics card in this video. This thing only goes for 430 bucks. And for your $430, you're gonna get a bunch of power. Like I said, we're gonna be running games at 1440p at 240 FPS with this bad boy. Oh, we got a card on it that says, Devil, you are one of us now. Oh snap, and here it is. Sick. Gonna rock two eight pins for the juice. Got Radeon right here. This is a matte finish right here, by the way, guys. It's nice, nice finish up here. These are RGB lights right here. It's gonna light up. This card was 430 bucks, guys. The links for every single one of these parts that we're using for this build are listed in the video's description. Check it out. All right, guys, so the CPU we're gonna be pairing with, a Ryzen 5 5600X with stock AMD heatsink that it comes with. We will be using that to save some bucks. Here's our CPU and the heat sink. This is a six core CPU, you guys. It will get the job done for your video editing and it will also support a graphics card in games. Keep in mind that this build that we're doing here today, it's upgrade potential is very high because when you're done with this bad boy and you wanna pop in an even better boy, you can upgrade up to a Ryzen 9, which is a lot of power. So now the motherboard, we're going with an MSI board. This is the MPG X570 Gaming Plus. It's rocking an X570 chipset. This is an ATX form factor board. You will be able to pop in your graphics card then you'll also be able to add other stuff like video capture devices and whatnot. The ports, a lot of USB ports and an optical audio port and a type C port. Great board for the 157 price tag. I'm gonna take out what we need for when we build this PC. The IO shield, the heatsink for our storage, the screw for our SSD. That's all we need from here. Let's go over our storage. We're gonna be rocking 500 gigs in an M.2 SSD form. In fact, you can upgrade this to whatever you want. One terabyte, two terabytes, four terabytes. So for this one to stay within budget, 500 gigs, this WD blue drive will get the job done. For our RAM, 16 gigs, rated at 3,600 megahertz. Classic Corsair Vengeance kit that I used in a lot of the previous builds because it's a great value for the money. DDR4 and M.2 SSDs have dropped in money. The fact that this is 43 bucks when it used to be 50 something, and that this is 57 bucks when it used to be, <laughs> to be 90. It's good to see that components starting to drop down in price. The one that I'm most excited about is the fact that SSDs are cheaper right now because I use a lot of storage. Now let's go over our juice, aka the power supply. We chose an NZXT bronze rated 750 watt power supply because they do have a gold version of this. I always like to get at the very least bronze. I do not like to mess with anything under bronze because I want the systems that I build to be reliable and I've had bad experiences with silver rated power supplies and even below. So I'm fully confident in recommending you guys this power supply. So this guy ran at 70 bucks. Here we're gonna find our power supply. And it always has this fresh chemical smell that I fancy and even though it's probably not good for my health. And then you got your cables. Where are we gonna be throwing all these lovely components inside of? A case by Zalman. This is Zalman's S3 and we paid 55 bucks for it. And those are all our parts. Everything else I consider extra, such as our Funko Pop. We're gonna be throwing in a Hellbat in there. So it's gonna be black and red, of course. So I'm gonna add some custom black and red power supply cables. All right, homies, ready? Let's jump into the build. So we're gonna be working with our motherboard and our CPU first. So we're gonna put our CPU inside of here. First, we're gonna to wanna to remove these two things right here. A lot of people will worry about damaging their components. I understand if you invested a lot of money in them, when you damage them, you just lost your investment. Obviously, I'm being a little more reckless here with the components, like literally putting it on top of the GPU. For the camera shots, guys, obviously you guys are not gonna do this. When you do this, just have the board on a flat surface. That's how I do it. And it was my point of bringing this up was just to give you guys confidence that you're not gonna break your components, guys. It's all good. These things are actually pretty resilient and contrary to popular belief. All right, guys, let's do this. So now that we remove these things, first, we're gonna get the lever. We're gonna lift it to the side and all the way up. All right, guys, so if we take a look at our CPU socket, there's a little arrow right here on the top left of it. And there's also a white circle on the board right there. And when we look at our 5600X, there's a little golden arrow on the bottom left-hand side of it, right there. It's super tiny, but you can see it. So we're gonna line up the golden arrow of our CPU with the arrow on the CPU socket. So we're gonna hover it over with both arrows lined up, and then we're just gonna drop it into place. 
See, that did not go in. If that happens, you do not want to push it in because you're going to bend the pins. We do not want to do that. So we simply lift it back up, hover it again, and then let it just drop in. And that time it did fall right in. So exactly what should happen. And we pull the lever all the way back down. Here's the finished product. It should look like that. Now, guys, we're going to install the heat sink. The stock heat sink already has pre-applied thermal paste. No need to worry about that. I'm gonna line up all four points. Four points on the board. Here we go. Now, we're gonna screw in opposite sides. Then the side across. So uh, both of those sides are attached. Now the other sides and the one across. So you can't over screw it because there's a safety. So just keep screwing till your screwdriver stops. There you're done. And now we want to connect the fan to the motherboard. And that is going to be right here. It should look like this guys. And it's labeled CPU fan. Next, the installation of our RAM kit. So we want our two sticks to run in dual channel. So we're gonna pull back the levers of every other slot. So the second one and the fourth one. This doesn't move up here. And it only goes in one way. This is the correct position. And once it's in, push down with both thumbs. And it goes all the way in evenly. And this lever will pop back up. Not this position, because you gotta line up this indent right here, but this side. And this goes into the fourth one. And now push down with both thumbs. Boom, look at that, beautiful. All right, what's next? Our storage is next. We're gonna start M.2 drive into here. We need to screw in a standoff for our drive that's gonna go into this point right here. I'm using the screwdriver to finish it off. It should look like that. And it already came with the screw inside of it. Gonna just take that out and we're gonna put our M.2 in like this. It's gonna go right in, lay the drive on the standoff and secure it. And it's in. Now we're gonna put our motherboard inside our case. But first impressions, what do you think, guys? Case looks good. We're gonna remove front and back panels. Wiring these cables to the back. Before we attach our motherboard inside your case, you wanna make sure that all the points inside the case are in the correct layout for our board. This is an ATX board, and the standoffs inside this case are not yet in the ATX layout. We need to add some standoffs. So I'm gonna get the bag. And we're gonna need three standoffs. They look like this. I'm gonna put one right here, right here, and up here. To screw these in all the way, now we need one of these tools. I will link it in the video description. There we go. All right, dope. So now all motherboard standoffs are where we need them to be. Last thing before putting in our motherboard, we need to install our IO shield. We want it in this direction. Put it into the case line the sucker up and then we got to clip in all four sides all the way done i hold the motherboard by the heat sink i just get up in there just like you know just make it fit i'm first gonna line up the ports with the io shield all right all lined up now i line up the board with the middle standoff and there it is i'm gonna be using this screw to secure our motherboard All right guys, so let's take a look inside. I already screwed in two of them, this one and this one. The reason I didn't screw in this middle one yet is because the SSD heatsink that comes with the motherboard goes here. But in order for it to be installed, we're gonna be screwing in another standoff that came with the motherboard into here instead of a screw. So now we're gonna screw in that heatsink into that point and that point right there. Now there's a protective film here that I already removed. Make sure you remove that first. Now we're gonna secure it. And look how much cleaner it looks now. We're not done yet though. To finish securing our motherboard, we've already done the three middle ones here, here, and here. Now we need three on top. One, two, three, and three at the very bottom. Here, here, here. Great guys, our motherboard is secure. Now we're gonna be installing our power supply. There's some cables already attached to our power supply, which we will be using. We'll put those to the side. We are gonna be hooking up a couple more cables. We're gonna be plugging in two more cables. Another CPU power cable and a Molex power cable. First, our Molex one looks like this. You can't miss it. This end, we're gonna plug it into peripheral SATA. Beautiful. Next one, labeled CPU. We are going to plug in the side that's not labeled CPU. We'll set this to the side. This one that doesn't split open and is not labeled into CPU. Power supply is prepped. Make sure that the fan is facing down always. Slide it in, line up the points come with the power supply. 
All right, guys, we're making good progress. Next, we're gonna plug in three sets of cables, our power supply cables from the power supply that are gonna power everything. And second group, all the case cables, which connect the power button and USB ports of our case. And the third set of cables is our fan cables, which is actually only one one back here we're gonna start it off with our power supply cables depending on what case you buy the clearance right here may be little to nothing like our situation today or a lot so since this is little to nothing we need to unscrew our motherboard so this is where our cpu power cable is going to connect to there was not enough clearance for the cable to go through so now that the motherboard is unscrewed we remove it now i'm going to put the two cpu power cables through here the one we plugged in and the one that was already attached to the power supply which is labeled CPU. And yes, so is the other one. But if we look at the first one, see how there's a clip? That's gonna be clipping onto this and it should look like that. There's the first one. Now the second one, guys, is only four pins, not eight. Remember, this cable splits. And there we have our finished product. The second cable also clips up here. This thing and the one that didn't plug in, we just set it to the side. Before I put my motherboard back into place, I'm gonna get the fan cable and work it through here. Same way we installed our motherboard ports need to be lined up first. Also, we want this fan cable to be on this side of the motherboard, going to the back, not underneath the motherboard. All right, guys, the motherboard is resecured. Now, if there was enough clearance here to begin with, we wouldn't have had to remove the motherboard. Other cases will have enough clearance. This one did not. Also, you get what you pay for. How much did we pay for this case? 55 bucks USD. Again, for what this case costs, I'm pleased with it. I'm not disappointed. Now, we're still plugging in our power cables and the CPU power cable is done. Next is this big 24 pin power cable. I'm gonna be hooking up a custom sleeve extension cable to it. This would have plugged into our motherboard, but now I'm plugging the original cable into our extension. And now our custom sleeve cable is gonna hook up to the motherboard. I'm gonna work it in through here. And again, same situation. We have a clip here. That's gonna clip back here. Line it up straight and push it all the way until it clips. And it's in. And now we have ourselves a way cleaner look. And in the back of the case, we find this cable right here, which powers the two front fans of our case. And that's where our Molex power cable comes in. So the end with the four pins and we plug in the power. And now the fans are powered. These do not connect to the motherboard, for this case at least. But the back fan of the case will connect to the motherboard. Now the next power cable is for our graphics card, but we're gonna save that for later when it's time to install our card. Now let's finish hooking up our last fan. We're gonna be hooking up a fan extension cable to it. I'll link these in the video's description along with all the other parts used in this build. Now this little guy is going to hook up into one of our system fan ports. And this motherboard's rocking a lot. We got four here. Does not matter which one it goes into. Plugged it into four. We plugged in our power cables, we plugged in our fan cables, and now we're gonna plug in our case cables. First one, all the way to the left side of our board, we're gonna plug in our HD audio cable. It is labeled. And it only goes in one way, with the HD audio text facing up. And there it is. On the board, that's labeled J-A-U-D-1. Next cable is labeled USB for the USB ports on our case. And there you go. Only goes in one way as well with USB text facing down. Next is our USB 3.0 cable. It's going to plug in right here. Only goes in one way. So we're going to line up this where there's a little cutout for it, which is on the top. Line it up straight. We don't want to bend pins here and push it in. Good to go. Next is our last case cable, JFP1, which plugs in right here. I'm gonna throw a chart up on the screen to make it easier to follow along with me, guys. So first row, first and second pin, we're gonna plug in our power LED, plus and minus. Plus is on the left. And that is in, right under it. Second row, first and second pin, we're gonna plug in our HDD LED cable. Turn it around, the arrow is positive, so that arrow goes on the left. Done. Now back to the first row, third and fourth pins, we plug in the power switch. Does not matter what way you plug it in. And right under the power switch, row two, third and fourth pins, goes our reset switch. Good job, guys. JFP1 complete. Next, the fun part, we're going to be installing this bad boy. Going to plug into our first PCI slot. We need to remove the second and third brackets. I loosen it by going up and down, up and down. But make sure you don't scratch our board here. That's done. We can get this out of the way for now. All right, guys, pull this all the way back. It already is, but if it was up back, putting in our card, and you want to line this up with the first PCI slot, got it in, and once it's lined up, we just push it straight in. That has clipped back up to secure it, of course. Getting another one of these screws. It came with the case. 
And when you look at that, that's an installed graphics card, but it needs its juice. So here's our graphics card power cable. It's labeled PCI, but why have this? And you can have this. Same thing, guys. Instead of this, plugging into the graphics card, going to plug into my custom sleeve cable extension, linked in the video's description. And we want the clip down here. And that's four pins of power. Boom, let's tuck this in now. So guess what? We're done. Good job, guys, if you're following along. Now, we just need to do the final touch, like a Funko Pop and some RGB lights. Cue the time lapse. We're done guys. I don't think you guys fully understand how much power this packs for a thousand bucks. I can't wait to show you guys as we're gonna jump into the games very, very soon. We're gonna play so many dope titles. If you follow along, again, congratulations. You only have to do a couple more things now. We have to install Windows 11 and I will show you how to do that for free in the video linked in the video description. And after Windows, we need to install our drivers, which is super simple. And that is also covered in a video linked in this video's description. First boot up. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that. Take it in. So the Funko Pop we went with was held back which was super appropriate. All right, guys, be sure to check out CreatorHQ.com. And here we go. We're gonna put this guy to the test. For Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, 1440p, quality settings, 100% render resolution. And here are the rest of the settings. Let's get it. I'm winning this match. No, you're not. You're not. Yes, I am. Not yes, not it is. yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yo, somebody shut that baby up right now. I'm playing, I'm trying to win. That's right. That's right. Who doubted me? You doubted me, Kenny. Why'd you doubt me, Kenny? For Siege, FOV 90, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 1440p res. Here's the graphic settings. Oh, snap. Get up. That's right. You can't sneak up on us. Kind of corner here, guys. Not going to lie. No! No, you gotta help me. They're down there. Let's go, let's go. You can do it. Hey, you played your part. <laughs> Sorry, man. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Very well played. Oh, yeah. But, ooh, we did good. We got a tank. <laughs> we accidentally downed one teammate, but when I was talking about that, we we're getting over 200 FPS. So, just performance, amazing. Settings we're using for Rust 90 FOV, 1440p resolution, and here are the graphic settings. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. What's up, buddy? You're coming back. Hey, buddy. Oh, my God, you're so bad. Say no. <laughs> oh, let's get on. Oh, that's what you call teamwork right there. Oh, snap. Under us. Oh, shoot. I'm stuck. Ah! <laughs> no. How many shots do you need to take, you warrior? That's right. That's Why right. Boom. Bam. Bop. A real challenger has claimed the victory. Yeah, you ain't ready. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, warrior. <laughs> All right, guys, rest performance. 
pretty good, decent, pretty decent. Hey man, I like the tunes you're playing, man. That's some good stuff right there, man. Yo, you gotta watch your back. It's dangerous out here, man. It is. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Why are you dressed like a zombie? <laughs> what are you talking about? To a de ah. to a deadly. <laughs> All right, well that's rest for us. Next game. For Apex Legends, 1440p, 110 FOV. Here's the rest of the settings. You gotta be kidding me, dude. Ooh, got pinned, but performance is great, guys. All right, next game for PUBG. We're gonna be playing it at 1440p resolution. Here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. All right, so we're playing a real match for with AIs. Oh my goodness, these AIs are so dumb. They just stand still, do they? Except this one. This one's not very smart. Huh? Oh snap! Oh, kill himself with the grenade. <laughs> Next game. Next, Overwatch 2, 1440p, 103 FOV. Graphics quality, here it is. Let's do it. Let's go. I'm sick, guys. I'm sick, but I made a chicken soup. Let's go, chicken soup. Yeah. Let's go, baby. We got a nine player kill streak there, guys. Performance is really good for Overwatch. We're at 300 FPS. Get her, get her. Nice. Jeez, epic. 99% GPU utilization, guys. Look at that. Perfect CPU combo. We won. Yeah. That was nice. That was a good game. For GTA Online, 1440p, DX11. All this is set to off. We set all these to the middle. And here's the rest of the settings. In the car. Yo, that's a sick ride, dude. Oh, sorry, lady. Sorry, lady. Secure the meat. Who's cracking the safe? We can do it. This should hold them. Oh, that worked. Wait, one of our guys died. Can't hold them off much longer. Oh my goodness, cracked the safe already. Bro, this is impossible. Oh, you did it. Gang boss. I need this car. Oh, no. <laughs> we passed the mission. Let's go. Okay, so settings for Fortnite 1440p. Three resolutions at 100. We're on performance mode, and here are the rest of the settings. Oh, wow. Dollars can't sleep. 
sleep Weather's so nice, only got good vibes Yeah, we're here chillin', chillin' in paradise Sunny day, sunny day, sunny day No clouds in the sky, but I get away Feels like it's been a freaking decade Sorry, don't call me, cause I'm gonna be on breath Gonna be sunny day, sunny day, make way All the stress and doubt, yeah, not today Feels like it's been a freaking decade Sorry, don't call me, cause I'm gonna be on breath Five health. No way. Okay, GG. Settings for Valor and Fortune 40p. Graphics quality. Here it is. Just let them try to catch That was the last one. Boss by five kills. All right, guys, that's a wrap. We tested out a bunch of games. They all performed great. I'll catch you guys in the next build guide on Friday. Peace.